This episode is brought to you by Vital Farms. Isn't it bullshit to have to question where your food comes from? At Vital Farms, you can trace your pasture-raised eggs all the way back to the source, the pasture. On the side of each pasture-raised carton of eggs, you'll find the name of the farm where your eggs were laid. And when you look the farm up on their website, you'll get a peek at all the sunshine, fresh air, and open space the hens enjoy. Learn more and find out where to buy them at vitalfarms.com. Vital Farms, keeping it bullshit free. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at H&M.com. The holidays start here at Kroger with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. You could do a classic herb-roasted turkey or spice it up and make turkey tacos. Serve up a go-to shrimp cocktail or use Simple Truth wild-caught shrimp for your first Cajun risotto. Make creamy mac and cheese or a spinach artichoke fondue from our selection of Murray's cheese. No matter how you shop, Kroger has all the freshest ingredients to embrace all your holiday traditions. Kroger, fresh for everyone. This episode is brought to you by Klaviyo, the platform that powers smarter digital relationships. With Klaviyo, you can activate all your customer data in real time, connect seamlessly with your customers across all channels, guide your marketing strategy with AI-powered insights, recommendations, and automated assistance, deliver experiences that feel individually designed at scale, and grow your business faster. Power smarter digital relationships with Klaviyo. Learn more at klaviyo.com slash Spotify. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash Spotify. Welcome to the HCI family of podcasts, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We share our own original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. Join us for practitioner-oriented content around all things leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with the HCI family of podcasts. Welcome to the podcast. In this podcast episode, I talk with Brian Smith about the art of self-awareness and maximizing one's impact on those they lead. Brian Smith, welcome to the conversation today. Thank you, John, for having me. It is a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from Illinois. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about the art of self-awareness and maximizing one's impact on those they lead. I am a big believer in self-awareness as a as a leadership superpower. It's a it's a really important tool. It's one that honestly a lot don't fully utilize. And if you want to better understand those around you and if you want to have a great impact, it starts with yourself and it starts with some self-reflection, self-awareness, and grounding yourself in your current context. So we're going to unpack all of that together today. As we get started, I wanted to share Brian's bio with everybody. Brian Smith, PhD, stands at the helm of IA Business Advisors as its founder and senior managing partner. Having counseled over 20,000 global leaders, ranging from entrepreneurial visionaries to seasoned CEOs, he is a sought-after thought leader in the area of management consulting, culture development, and influence management. Alongside his daughter, Brian has co-penned two groundbreaking bestsellers, Individual Influence, Find the I in Team, and Positive Influence, Be the I in Team. Now, Brian, is there anything else you would like to highlight by way of your own personal background or context before we dive on into the topic? Yeah, I think, I mean, for context, we got to this place of trying to be influencers about influence itself through our work in management consulting, ERP integration, massive change in society from no computers to computers. This is where IA started. Uh, with the integration of technology to the desktop, which has evolved to technology in our back pockets. And Mm -hmm. 
it's been so influential on humans, on our self, uh, self-actualizing, self-understanding, and how we expound our influence outward from that. So I think what I'd like people to know is that that's where we came from. And that's what our mission is, is understanding influence individually and how it is part of who we are every single moment. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And influence really is the name of the game, right? Um, now I, I don't like talking about influence in terms of manipulation. Um, you know, sometimes people frame it that way, getting what you want, you know, through pulling levers and, and kind of, you know, tweaking, you know, the, the situation that you might be in. Um, but influence, certainly it can involve, um, you know, interactions with other people. It does involve interactions with other people that gets you, you know, towards a goal. But I think the best influence doesn't come through manipulation. It doesn't come through carrot and stick. It doesn't come through those sorts of things. It comes uh, through your centeredness with yourself, understanding and empathy with those around you. And then the best influence is those who become committed to you through relationships of mutual accountability and trust, where they feel, you know, perhaps inspired by you, but certainly a trust in you and a willingness to, to work out the hard things with you, right? Whether that's in a workplace setting in a home setting or whatever the case may be. Uh, and, you know, that's influence. That's, that's when you, you make a huge impact on those around you. Uh, I've seen people who espouse influence, you know, and they, and then they have their, their five, you know, step process for, essentially manipulating those around you to get what you want. That's not what we're talking about here. Right. And that might get you something you want in the short term, but it's certainly not going to play out well for you in the long term because relationships are built on trust and they're built on uh, repeat interactions with individuals. And so if you want to take advantage of somebody to get what you want, again, short-term gains, perhaps you might be able to get something, but, but in the long run, you're not going to be able to work with that person. They're not going to trust you and your influence will wane. Right. Yeah, that's right. You know, our mission isn't about manipulation. It's about understanding whatever area of influence you have, because whatever that area of influence you have is important. It's important. If it's positive, it's important. If it's negative, you may not understand that it's negative. Yeah. Um, you might have biases or things that get in the way of your own ability to understand. You might self-justify action. And part of that process is learning about yourself and coming to the realization that our influence began before we were born. And yeah. influence starts before we're born. When our parents found out that we were going to be born, we were changing lives. We were already altering how people lived, how people were, were were doing things. And we hadn't even come into this world yet. And then through our lives, we do that. Our work is helping people understand first what that means to them within whatever area of influence they live in, where they're at today, and what brought you to that moment, unpacking that. And sometimes unpacking that can be really difficult. You might have mm -hmm. to go and talk to other people, counselors, psychologists, psychiatrists, but gathering that understanding, looking in the mirror, learning about self so that you can be your best self, but not in a selfish way. Yes, to be your best self sounds selfish, but if you are trying to be your best self so that you can influence everybody around you as that best self for them to be their best selves also, also yeah. is the foundation of what our work is about and what we try to do every day here. Yeah. So it's about self-actualization and maximizing your potential in reciprocal relationships with others around you, where you're trying to do the exact same thing for them. So you're trying to be your best self so that you can model, you know, and be supportive of others and being their best selves and that you can, uh, you can help them maximize their potential. And then together you, you can do great things. So again, like if we're talking about like a home relationship with two partners, you know, and perhaps they have children. Um, yeah. When, when you better understand yourself and self-actualize uh, you're going to be a far better partner uh, in the workplace. You're going to be a far better team member. You're going to be a far better manager and leader uh, when that happens. 
Uh, but it's hard. And, and there's a, a lot of reasons why it's hard, I think. But if we if we take a step back and just talk about the workplace for just a moment, you know, one of the things I see is just the hectic pace of things getting in the way. So you have a lot of people who have good intentions, you know, and they they might fully recognize everything we're talking about. They're like, yep, not in their head and saying, yep, that's important. I need to make sure that I'm journaling. I need to make sure that I'm meditating. I need to make sure that I'm doing this, that, and the other. And we can talk about some of those things here in just a minute. Um, but then something gets in the way and they don't do it. What is that thing? Well, again, it varies by person, but one of the challenges I think just pervasive in society is just the busyness um, ec- epidemic. You know, like people just running around like chickens with their heads cut off constantly, going from thing to thing to thing to thing. The pace is so constant that you don't have a chance to take a step back to to ground yourself, to reflect and see where you're at and better understand where you're coming from. And in some cases, confront where you're coming from so that you can be in a better spot with those around you. Yeah. To slow down, you have to become more intentional and to become more intentional. You have to be thoughtful about what it is that influences you through your day. And it's a, it's a tall order for many of us in today's society. There's so much coming at us. And there's so much distraction and we create our own distraction also. Yeah. As I noted earlier about, we have access to data in our back pocket. Back in 2000, when I was writing my dissertation, technology induced attention deficit disorder, this was long before we had Facebook. We didn't have Facebook. Mm-hmm. We didn't have Twitter. Um, we didn't have any of that. We just had faster speeds of internet and AOL and maybe yeah. messaging. <laughs> And yet we were already seeing this distraction. We were already seeing this faster pace. We were seeing humans who didn't previously exhibit uh, attention deficit disorder traits, starting to see it creep into the workplace, into the home space. Mm. And it's only accelerated. I mean, data comes at us now so fast that we're teaching ourselves to multitask, which is teaching ourselves to make massive mistakes. We're teaching (laughs) ourselves to ignore things. We're also teaching ourselves to skip through life without really enjoying it to the fullest context that life really should be enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And so within the workplace, you see this all the time, as you pointed out, John, it's, uh, it's constant relationships wane. Um, People aren't as communicative face to face um culture is 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 damaged by it and the one thing we can do is slow down and become a little bit more intentional and look each of us has a way you mentioned uh journaling or meditating or taking a walk each of us has an area of influence that helps us to become mindful of self and to do better you have to determine what works we Mm -hmm. can just give you some bullet points but You just got to slow down and try one, try two, and you have to do it habitually for a while to see if it takes hold. Is it something that fits into your life, into your area of influence and helps you to become more mindful, more intentional? And when you do, we know this, the 20,000 plus people that we've been dealing with here at IA are our test bed for this. And they all belong to organizations that I can tell you are amazingly successful from this practice, from slowing down, from being mindful, from self-actualizing. So as, as you were talking about speeding up and the pace, I, I was thinking about, it's it's a dated reference, um, but there's this old Adam Sandler movie that came out, I don't know, a decade plus ago um, called Click. And the whole premise of this was that he he finds this magic remote control that allows him to fast forward through the parts of life that he doesn't like. So, you know, he's really busy, has all these different things. He feels like he's getting pressured at home, you know, the quote unquote nagging wife, and he's not giving enough time at home and with his kids and, and he's trying to do all this stuff at work. And, and so he, he gets this magical remote control and now he can just like fast forward through all the the, the stuff that's challenging or um, that is, is just annoying or, or even the parts where he just feels like he's stretched too thin in different directions and he can just skip through it. And then all of a sudden find himself on the other end and just spend the time with his family and just do the things that he really wants to do. And of course, all of a sudden, you know, as the movie progresses, the the plot here is that 
you know, it starts to get away from him. And all of a sudden it, he, he doesn't have control over it anymore. And he's fast forwarding through his whole life. And all of a sudden he finds himself in his old age, um, you know, on a deathbed and with all the regret that comes from that. Now, you know, this is a silly story. It's a silly movie. Um, but it's, it's a good metaphor for how a lot of us walk through life um, because we get so busy and we, we just get caught up in what we think is so important, but isn't. Uh, and before we know it, you know, we've just fast forwarded through all the things that actually matter. And, and, you know, th- nobody wants to live with regret. Nobody wants to get to later stages of their life and wish they had done things differently. And, you know, to an extent that's unavoidable, we're all going to have things we wish we did differently, but to your point, if we slow down and we take the time to think about what we're doing and recognizing that we don't have to do every single thing. We don't have to continually keep our foot on the pedal nonstop in order to be happy in life. And in fact, usually happiness comes in the slowing down, in the being present, in the the process of that self-reflection and self-actualization. Yeah, if you, one of the uh, things that we like to teach people is, if you want to know how to do this, if you want to know how to actually activate that movie you know uh think of it this way do you have any coulda shoulda woulda moments i could have done this i should have done this i would have done this and then slow down and think about those moments where you can apply that and how you sped through it how you if you would have slowed it down you might have instead of could have you would have instead of should have or you did instead of would have And those are opportunities for you to use self-reflection to contextualize moments where you're applying your own behaviors, your own challenges, your own areas of influence contextually for yourself and learning from it. Mistakes are there for us to learn from, not to regret. We should be learning from them. They are opportunities that we should take advantage of. And if we approach these moments, if we approach these self-reflective times and what we get out of them in a positive, influential way for ourselves, how can I how can I learn from this? How can I make it better? How can I slow down, become more mindful about it, and be, become more intentional the next time that this is posed with me? Then, in the present moment, the next time you'll likely slow down and you'll likely make a decision that you'll be more positive about. Yeah. And and we've already referred to some of the common approaches, right, towards reflection and, and slowing down. And you also aptly mentioned, you know, how it really does need to be something you figure out for yourself. Everyone's different. Everyone's things are going to resonate with you differently. Um, you know, one of the, the ways that I center myself, I, I've always sung. So I sing in a community choir. Uh, I love singing. I love music uh, for two hours a week you know, on a Wednesday night, I go and I sing music. And that may sound odd, you know, and people are like, well, why singing, you know, but you're not reflect, you're not like journaling and stuff. I'm like, but, but I, it helps. It's, it's a way for me to tap in to my inner self and to what I'm feeling and, and to slow down and quiet my mind and to do something totally different than what I normally do, you know, for pretty much every uh, part of the rest of my week. And and it, it's become a very rich part of my life. Um, now, for other people, that may not resonate with you at all. In fact, you know, maybe you may be tone deaf and you, the thought of like singing, you know, just sounds painful to you. Well, that's fine, right? Some people, it's walking their dogs at the park, going up the canyon, going, you know, up into the mountains, going down by the lake. Maybe it's, maybe it is journaling, maybe it's yoga, some form of meditation, whatever. Like there's so many different things that you can do. Um, and you know, one of the things I get a little nervous about is when people get too prescriptive. Um, So you have lots of kind of gurus out there that say, follow my path, follow my prescription, and this will solve your problems. That's nonsense. I mean, that's, that's not going to help you, but you have to figure it out for yourself and know that there are a lot of different tools. There are a lot of different arrows in that quiver that you can pull out. uh, And some are going to work better for you than others. And, and a lot of that just has to do with your own background and experience and upbringing and your own socialization and and all those things that have made you who you are. Yeah. And if you struggle with finding an outlet for this, ask somebody you trust, you know, how do you slow down? What do you do that 
brings you contentment? How is it that you can, you know, you like to meditate? Is there anything else that gives you that same feeling? For me, it's mowing lawns. <laughs> yeah, I can sit on a lawnmower and I, I don't think about work. I don't think about anything, but right there in that moment, the satisfaction of it. And it, it, it refreshes me. Like you were singing, I come out of mowing lawns feeling refreshed and it doesn't matter if I'm riding it or I'm pushing it. It's just the repetitive back and forth action of doing something that I enjoy. And each of us has some area of influence like that. But if you struggle with that, engage your social network, engage your area of influence to help you. That's what we're there for. That's what society is supposed to support each other, especially the societies that we build for ourselves, the friends, the family, the work environments. That's why we have them. And, and they're there for not just selfish reasons, but if they come to you for the same thing, you can return the favor. You can slow down, get in the moment and help somebody else get through it also. Yeah. So as, as we are able to slow down, try, you know, experiment, try some of these things out, figure out what works for you. Um, you know, you may decide, you know, yoga or like, like traditional, you know, meditation kind of, you know, as you, as you conjure a picture in your mind of what meditation looks like, looks like you may think that those things aren't going to you know, resonate with you. Great. Fine. But, you know, it, try things and experiment a little bit. And then if it, if it doesn't seem to be working, move on to something else. Like you said, talk to other people, get input, get insights. Um, but as you do it, you'll get more comfortable with it. You'll, you'll get more into the habit of doing it on a regular basis so that when the hecticness of life, the messiness of life continues to come at you, it's in, it's in those moments where the dilemmas are being thrown at you and you're dealing with all the challenges that you need it the most that you need to be able to take a step back. Um, and in our last few minutes, let's, let's talk just a little bit more now about, you know, assuming that we've recognized the importance of this, assuming that we've actually taken the time to do the experimentation to better understand how we can center ourselves and, and practice self-evaluation, self-reflection in meaningful ways. How do we then translate that into positive influence through meaningful, healthy relationships with those around us? Well, I think once you've recognized, as you've said, yourself, and you've gotten to that point where you can slow down, you can be mindful of self, you can uh, uh, be intentional, you can start to identify around you how your influence is influencing others. You can see if it's positive, you can see if it's negative. And if, if you're being mindful, then you can start to engage with improving behavior if it needs to be improved, uh, using your influence to help others have positive influence. And you'll know if it's positive. If it makes you feel good and other, feel, other people mm. feel good, then it's positive. If there's drama, if it, if it creates any kind of negativity, with yourself, or if there's a ripple effect and you see somebody else struggling because of something you're doing, then there's a gap there. And it might be lack of context. It might be not great communication. It might be misinformation. It might be assumptions that are happening because of body language or mm -hmm. words that are being used. And when we slow down, we can recognize these things. Sometimes we go into a conversation and our body language doesn't match the context of what we're trying to do. So the takeaway is different. And if you yes. don't ask, you know, why did you have a different takeaway than what I was intending? And if they share with you why they had that takeaway, you can improve. You can engage in that. You can learn why people interpret things the way they do. You can learn about how your influence is going outward. And if you share the same things, if your takeaway from somebody is always negative mm. and you know their intention isn't to be negative, share that with them. Hey, you know, John, every time we talk, I, I come away feeling insecure. Mm. Your tone is, you know, to me, your tone is this. And you might say, wow, I never realized that I had that tone or that my body language exhibited that. And when we engage this way with the people in our areas of influence, we grow together. And that creates positive influence. That creates ripple effects that can be positive. 
because it teaches people how to do the same thing over and over again. And the farther away from us that that is practiced, the farther our positive influence can get. Mm, yeah. So if you were to make a recommendation, like the the best, like two things that anyone listening today should do to get started on this process, what would those be? Well, uh, the first for us is obviously slow down, look in the mirror and ask yourself, what moments in my area of influence at home, at work, with my friends, do I recognize some kind of negative influence? Uh, do I have a short temper? Uh, is it my tone of voice? Do I struggle with communication? And just slow down and think about those moments and think about anybody involved in those moments. That would be the first thing. And then secondly, ask, how can I do better with that? How can I improve my body language? How can I improve how I speak? How can I improve my relationship with that person at work that there seems to always be drama? And engage with them and ask them and do it objectively without judgment. Um, if you do that, that first step will lead to a second step and a third step. And if you continue to practice that over and over again, you'll notice positivity positivity creeping back into your areas of influence. You will notice that you become more mindful. Sometimes it, it'll go from that one product or that one issue and just keep moving outward and just keep practicing it one step at a time. Yeah, very well said. Brian, this has just been a pleasure. The time has flown by. I need to let you go here in just a minute, but before we wrap things up for today, I just wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. So to connect with us, it's uh, the best place is our website, iabusinessadvisors.com. Uh, we have a publication page where you can learn about our book series. You can learn about all the blogs, podcasts, everything that we're involved in on uh, influence topics. Um, and we're on social media. We're on LinkedIn, Your Biz Doctor. We're on uh, X or Twitter, Your Biz Doctor. Uh, we're on Facebook, The I and Team Series. Um, and then my takeaway is, I don't care what you do, where you're at, what your current station is in life, you matter, you have influence. And you have a huge responsibility with that influence. Do what you can to be the most positive influence within that specific area of influence that you have. And if you don't feel like it's positive, slow down and find a way to improve it and make it positive. Yeah, well said. Brian, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure. I encourage the audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Brian and his team can do for you. Check out all the wonderful resources. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.